Yo, 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 welcome back to the Further Your Lifestyle podcast, conversations on lifestyle, passions, and hustles. My name's Chris, I am your host, and I'm super excited to be back here having the conversation with you. Episode 114 today, and I'm addressing a question that I get asked across all my platforms, usually on YouTube, to be honest, most of the time in comments, or sometimes on Instagram as well, and that question is, how do I stay motivated? Now, I actually also answered this question just recently uh, in a conversation with John the reseller. We were talking about reselling in our business and we caught up and we answered questions that people had been asking both of us over a period of time. And I also get asked it so many times and I, I wanted to do another episode. I've actually done an episode on this before, like, you know, staying motivated and how to, you know, achieve your goals and things like that. I mean, that's what we talk about. We're here to talk about furthering your lifestyle. And I wanted to address it again, and it'll be a short and sharp uh, kind of answer in the terms of, you know, it's not going to be a long 40-minute episode, but I think it's something that we, we need to revisit on a periodic basis because as we continue to progress, and when I say continue to progress, I mean as we continue to do life, we're doing things thinking that this is what we want, but sometimes we need to hear things again, we need to hear it from a different perspective to actually finally click or actually to get a fresh perspective that's going to actually help us start doing the things that we want to be doing to be getting to where we want to be. So that's what I want to touch on today. So buckle up and let's dive in. So I'm going to answer this in the whole sense, or I guess the whole context of furthering your lifestyle. I mean, that's what the podcast is all about, right? So, uh, Basically, the way that I address this question when I get it on a regular basis is the first thing you need to understand is, well, being motivated, there's there's different ways we can be motivated, right? You're either working towards something or you're trying to get away from something else, right? So it's a push or pull. And I have done an episode on that. I'm not talking about that today. What I'm talking about is I think the first thing that we really need to understand is what is it do we that we want? Like, what is it that you want? You listening to this. If you've clicked this because you want to be motivated and you want to actually start making things happen, you need to understand what is it that you actually want? Like, what are you working towards? Now, I understand that this will change on a regular basis. You know, you think back between, you know, when you're a teenager, you're just trying to figure out life and get through high school and maybe you want to do an apprenticeship or maybe you've thought about, oh, maybe eventually as you get closer to the end of high school, you think about, oh, I'm going to go to college or I'm going to go to university and you want to study something. And then you start thinking, oh, by this age, I want to be married or I want to have kids or I don't want to have kids or I want to own a house and I want to be, you know, a top manager in this company or I want to, I want to be known for this. Or maybe you don't, maybe you just want to be a YouTuber. Maybe you want to be a podcaster. Maybe you just want to do art. Maybe you want to create soft toy plushies. Maybe you want to uh, film and direct toy videos. I I don't know, right? Like there's so many things out there. You could be a trader. You could raise fish. You could have a chicken farm. Like, I mean, you could ride a unicycle around Tasmania. I mean, you could do it for a living. You could go camping. You can be a hiking expert. You can be a park ranger. There's, there's so many things out there. I mean, the list goes on. I'm just pulling things as they come. But the reality is you need to define what that is. I, I can't do it. You need to understand what is your agenda. Now, one thing to understand is this will change. This will change always. As you've progressed through life, it changes. You know me, I, I've i shared this a few times, but you know, back back in the day, I thought I was going to, actually, when I was a kid, I wanted to have a, a um, and I think I have shared it before, is I wanted to have a place called Insect World. And it was going to be a big, like 12, 24 story building. And each floor was going to be a different experience of bugs. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that never happened, obviously. And that was back in, I think it was in grade two. And then as you progress, you change. I wanted to be a parks ranger at one stage. I wanted to be a marine biologist at one stage. I wanted to be a video game editor or creator or designer. And then wanted to do IT. And here I am now selling clothing and pre-owned goods on eBay. So, but I've always known I wanted to have my own business, right? And I've had multiple businesses over the years. Some have flopped, some I've sold, some haven't been relevant to pursue further. So, it's always changing. And where will I be in the future? I, you know, I'm not sure, but my aspirations and my goals right now is very, very clear. You know, I want to create this business, this reselling business into something that's going to continue to provide for my lifestyle and make it really fulfilling, meaning lots of money, enable me to live the life that I want, to do the different things that I want to do with Carla and, and my family and things like that. And also to build this podcast out and to make this podcast as 
big as possible and to share it to people and to you know travel around and do live episodes with people and I've got big aspirations but there's going to be a lot of work that comes with that so that actually gets to the second point is before you can even get to this second point you need to understand what is it that you want what are you working towards what is your agenda what is your end game all that jazz the second thing is like okay so now what is the gap right what is the gap between now and where you want to be and this is really where the, the whole motivation part comes in. Because if you know what you want, it's like, cool, you know what you're working towards. So we need to solve for the gap. And that gap could be a whole bunch of different things. It could be uh, how much effort you need to do. Uh, it might be the work that you need to un do. It might mean the skills you need to learn. It might mean the people you need to meet. It might mean, you know, how hard are you willing to work? What will be required? How long is it going to take? You need to understand this, right? And a lot of the time, this comes down to basic math. Uh, you know, yes, coming back to high school, you know, we learnt maths in primary school, but th think of it this way, right? Like if you want to save money, right? We can do the quick understanding that, okay, you want to save $100 a month. Well, we know in 12 months, you're going to have $1,200, right? How much money are you saving per month? Equals times the amount of months equals your total amount of money per year, right? So if you want to earn more than 12, if you want to save more than $1,200 a month, well, you need to be saving more than $100 a month. If you want to do, uh, you know, $10,000 or you want to do $5,000 or you want to do a million dollars, right? You know, you've got to be realistic of how much you can save, but you can start to see that it's going to take time, right? Unless you add more money to that bucket, you can't change the time factor. It'll get quicker if you add more money though. Right? The same thing with learning. If you want to learn a new skill, it usually requires time and effort. And for instance, driving a car might require 120 hours here in, I think, state of Victoria of uh, Australia. And that means usually you do 120 hours and you're going to do that over a range of, you know, driving in wet conditions, dry conditions, night conditions, morning conditions, foggy conditions, chaotic conditions, traffic conditions, all these different things. But 120 hours is going to give you that, I guess, enough learning experience to be able to say, hey, this person's ready to take a test and prove that they're ready to actually start driving, right? But you can't do any, you can't do 120 hours any quicker than 120 hours. You can do it, for instance, you could do one hour a day and that's 120 days, or you could do two hours a day and that's 60 days. So you can change the time element in terms of that, but 120 hours is 120 hours. Fitness, the same thing. If you want to run a marathon or a half marathon, you can't just wake up today and go do it. I mean, you can try. Uh, you probably won't be able to do it. So you need to build a plan of 16 to 20 weeks to be able to build up that momentum, that endurance, that stamina, that exercise uh, routine, the ability to even show up, and then you can make that process of progress uh, actually happen. So the same applies for bigger goals. If you want to have your big, bold and uh, audacious goal of having a big business, then you need to understand what does that even mean? What does that even look like? How will you make that happen? Who do you need to talk to? Now, I don't have the answer for this, but those are the things you need to be willing to understand before you even start embarking on it. This, this then leads me to point number three, right? So you know what you want, you understand that there's a gap and you understand what it is it's going to take. Sometimes we don't know the finer details. That's okay. As long as you understand this is what I'm embarking on, I've got to figure it out, right? The only person that's going to do it is you. Yes, you, right? I'm not going to do it for you. I'm doing my own problems. I'm doing my own goals, right? But the next point is then breaking down those milestones. So you know what's required, you know where you want to be, you know how long it's potentially going to take, and you know how much hard work you need to do in, in order to make it to occur. So why don't you start setting some milestones, right? If if you want to be earning $100,000 in your business, you know, this is a typical one that I talk about because, you know, I, I have my own business. You need to crunch the numbers of understanding, okay, this is how long it's going to take. So by this time, I want to, by, you know, this date, I should have $100,000. And that's what you're working towards. So you're motivated to hit it because you've set the goals, you've put it in front of you, and that's what you're working towards. If you work harder, you might even get more, all right? And the purpose of having these milestones is that it keeps it fresh, it keeps us forefront, and it enables us to also check in when we need to, to see that, are we actually going to hit this? Or are we ahead of it? Can I set a bigger goal next time? And... The milestones also enable us to, when we hit those periods, is to reflect, which kind of comes back to the next point as well. We need to be reflecting on a regular basis. You need to be checking in before you're hitting these milestones. You need to be checking in as you're progressing towards them, as you're hitting them, and then after as well. Because sometimes if you're, let's, let's just keep it down to financials again. 
If you're trying to hit $100,000 in revenue or profit in your business, or 20,000 or 5,000, or even just make an extra $500 a week or month, you need to start understanding, okay, what did I do to get the first $500? How will it work the same way to get the second 500? Or can I do it quicker now? Or was it just pure luck? Or was it just timing? Was it seasonal? And you can start to actually make some really good understanding from reflecting from that information. It's the same thing as we do a training plan, as we learn how to drive a car. If you fail your first test, you're gonna reflect and understand, okay, what didn't go right? What went wrong? Where can I do better next time? Oh, it was that type of turn, or I forgot to slow down. You learn, you you take the lessons from that reflection, and then you can apply them to reevaluate, to pivot, to adjust, and to start making progress forwards. It's important that we document these things. You need to keep it real. You need to keep it honest. Again, no one else is going to be doing this for you. I mean, if you're working with a bunch of people on the same aspiration, sure, you can spur each other on. But the reality is, is like, you're the only one that can make it happen. So you need to find ways to make this easy and exciting and fun for you. That helps with the motivation. But again, how do I stay motivated? Well, I know what I want. And I know that it's easy for me to say it now because I've done a lot of other legwork of figuring out what I don't want, right? And sometimes that's what we have to do. We have to just go through and experience a whole bunch of things to realize this isn't what we want right? And then you start to work towards what it is that you do want. Right? Now, the next point is the kind of like the final point of it is accountability. Tell someone or share the journey. Tell someone who can keep you honest, that can, you know, spur you on, encourage you, but also keep you accountable, right? The other way you can do it is share your journey. Show people what you're doing. Tell people. And work towards making that progress. That's that's what I do here on, on my channel, you know, my uh, personal channel talking about the reselling and the running and my business and things like that is I'm making progress and I'm sharing that progress with you, but I'm I'm basically just sharing it to myself because it's in that week or that moment or that month, it's it's what I've learned. It's what I've won. It's I've had a better week or I've had a worse week. What didn't work? What worked? So having that accountability is really going to enable you to stay the course. Again, how do I stay motivated? Well, again, I know what I want. I know what it's going to take and I've got the milestones in place to make it happen. I'm reflecting on a regular basis and I'm keeping myself accountable by sharing with people and, you know, meeting up with others to keep me accountable in terms of helping me progress and asking tough questions and things like that. Again, I understand that I might sound like I've got this all figured out, but look, there is a big gap of where I want to be and I realize that the only way to get there is to continue, continue to move forwards figure out how I do things better. How do I make more money? How do I progress? How do I sell items quicker? I'm talking you know, purely in the business perspective at this point. Same with my running. I'm, I've just kicked off a, a training plan for a 50K ultra marathon week two. I've got to do 21 weeks. I can't just expect to rock up on and do a 50K with no training. I can try, but realistically, there's a gap there. I need to get the strength. I need to get the mental fitness. I need to go through the whole nutrition plan. I need to get my body and my legs comfortable with being on my feet for eight to 10 hours. Uh, I need to get comfortable going up hills, down hills on rocky terrain, running through water, all these different things. The only way to get comfortable with that is to go through the process of doing it. <laughs> That's it. And I think the bonus tip here where we, we kind of forget, and it kind of wraps all of it up into a nice big bundle is understand what it is that you're committing to upfront, right? And me, me kicking off a new training plan, it scares the heck out of me, even though I've done it before. But it's a commitment of 21 weeks where I'm going to have to get rough and tough and suck it up and sweat it out and there'll be pain. And week two, I already had an injury. And I'm like, oh, this is going to blow out. But you, you, you address it. You go get the support. You work on the plans of how you pivot. How do you adjust from it? How do you manage it? How do you continue to move forwards? Sometimes moving forwards might mean you put it on pause and you come back to it later as well. But I think you need to really understand what is the commitment required so that you can have the focus and prioritization that is required. And sometimes it means leaving things aside, parking things on the shelf, putting them for another day or for a different season and making some of those tough sacrifices. Because again, when we're, we're, we're doing effort in one area, we're technically doing less effort in another. So understanding what is that for you and does that fit and how do you make it fit? And by covering these expectations, by covering and understanding 
this expectation of commitment and focus and prioritization that is required, you are then able to have a clear path of understanding. You remove any false expectations later and you can move forward with an understanding like this is what it's going to take. I'm comfortable with doing this. Therefore, let's go do it and let's make it happen. Because I guarantee you, the time is going to pass anyway. So if you're happy not making progress towards those big goals, then that's okay. That's okay. But you have to be comfortable with it. Your responsibility, your accountability, that's on you. If you do have questions about this, and I I do always want to make sure that I'm not just here saying all these things. Um, I genuinely do believe that there comes a time where we all just click and comes a time where we all just kind of hear things in a way that makes us want to make things happen. It might be with a weight loss journey. It might be to stop working for the nine to five, or it might to go for that new promotion or to level up at work or to take on a team or to go do that presentation or to go chat to that, that girl or guy or to do something out of your comfort zone. That's, that, that's all it might be. It might not be about being building a big business or anything like that. It might just be starting a YouTube channel. It might be starting a podcast. It might be going out and actually building a veggie garden in your house, like, you know, outside, and you're just a bit scared to do it, but you are you're you see other people do it and you want the same thing. You can do that too, but you need to understand that the only way to it is through it, like going through the process to get there, right? The only way to get to the top of the mountain is either you hike it, you run it, you climb it. Maybe you can drive up it. Maybe you can get a helicopter. Maybe someone else can carry you up, right? There's multiple ways we can get up, but they all involve you. You have to be the one going up it, right? You can't have someone else go up the hill for you and say, you've done it. It doesn't work that way, unfortunately. Uh, that It's just, just not reality. So, you know, I, I do understand that these things take time. And I would love to think that, you know, in, in one year, two years, 10 years, five years, that I'm still doing this and I'm sharing where I'm at with my journey, what I'm doing and how that progression has paid off. Maybe there's going to be some big lessons from it as well that I can share back to you. But, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much convicted that, you know, I'm on a path where if I keep doing what I'm doing, pivoting, adjusting and doing a little bit better, the results will continue to be a little bit better and they get a little bit easier. And the same thing can apply for you. If you have questions about this, comments about this, thoughts, more than happy to continue the conversation. Drop a comment down below if you are here on the YouTube experience. If you are listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or any great place that you can listen, leave a review. You know, reach out, leave a review. Um, if you can leave a comment there or give us a like or a thumbs up or subscribe to the podcast to get this on a weekly basis, by all means, please do. But I will ask you, can you share this with someone? Can you share this with someone? Is this relevant to someone that needs to hear it? Send it to them and say, hey, thought of you, have a listen to this. Uh, if you also want to leave a voice message, you can jump over to www.speakpipe.com slash further your lifestyle. And you can leave a voice memo and we can have a conversation that way. I can integrate it into the podcast, but that's on you. All right, team. Appreciate you being here. Really do enjoy these conversations and you have a wonderful day. Cheers.